Now, one thing that we should all understand about the lost world is that the lost walk in darkness, but they don't just walk in darkness. They are darkness. Ephesians 5, 8, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. But even though we understand, even though we understand that from a theological perspective, it's always still aggravated me when I see wicked sinners who profess faith in Christ adding to or taking away from the truth of scripture. Now, I want you all to listen carefully to what this quote unquote transgender man says about God. And Charlotte, I mean, the thing is that there are real people that are being impacted. Your community is being impacted. And and I wonder if there is a way to disentangle people's sort of not understanding of trans folks, right? I think the T is the toughest one in the alphabet soup, right? In the LGBTQ, the T gets get, right, because people don't have an understanding. People, yeah. even if they're not mean or not angry, don't have an understanding. Is there a way to sort of disentangle people's not lack of understanding from this this moral panic is now getting drag shows banned, even though that isn't trans. No, no. And, <laughs> and I think children are only unsafe at drag shows when a shooter shows up to kill them. That's right. That's where the threat is. I would challenge anyone just to get to know trans people. We are a vibrant, diverse community, as diverse as anyone else. You know, I'm from the great state of Texas. I served in the military. I go to church every Sunday. My faith is very important to me. But God made me in her image. God made me transgender. I want to address a couple of things that this man just said. The first thing he said was that children are only unsafe at drag shows when a shooter comes to kill them. Now, I don't think I've heard of a shooting at a drag show. I might be wrong, but I don't in recent time. I don't think I've heard of that happening. But one thing I do know is every time there's a drag show or a transgender story time in a library, children are molested and they are molested right in front of their parents. This is how sick this world is. Now, the other thing that this man said that was absolutely insane was addressing the Lord as a she. OK. But this is what's so amazing about all this and the thing that makes me praise God and his word. If I could sit down with this man and ask him one question, it would be why? Why Christianity? Because I know that you know that God's word condemns your lifestyle. You know that your lifestyle is an abomination in God's eyes. So why not just throw Christianity to the wind and be what you want to be over there? Okay? You know why he can't do that? Because God has given him a conscience in which he knows right from wrong. In 1 Kings 2.44, King Solomon rebuked the man for doing wrong, and this is what he said. You know in your heart all the wrong that you have done. One of the reasons the suicide rate is so high within the LGBT community is because they don't have a clear conscience. Okay? And, this is why, and this is why they seek to change the word of God. But we all know what happens to those who seek to do that. Galatians 1.8, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let them be accursed. A literal curse. It is very, very common for people to say, especially, for example, in relation to all of the recent, you know, hoopla over same-sex marriage and so on and so forth. If you've had a discussion with someone about this issue, you have run into people who have said, yes, but Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. Well, number one, that's not true. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount talks about pornea. He talks about sexual impurity, which is a reference to the pornea code in Leviticus 18, which clearly upholds the idea that homosexuality is sinful. Cause, cause, and, if, and if that's not what he's doing, we've got a huge problem because Leviticus 18 also talks about incest, and, you know, we get some bestiality in there and some other stuff in there. So if our new Christian ethic is only if Jesus talked about it specifically, then homosexuality is the least of our problems. But Jesus did address the issue of homosexuality because he addressed the issue of sexual impurity. He addressed the issue of fornication. He also addressed the issue of marriage and the nature of marriage. But here's the other problem. In doing this, we divorce Jesus from the rest of the Bible. And we let people do that. We let them do that. Well, Jesus never said anything about it. And then we just start scratching our heads and going, oh, well, well, um, well, um, uh. When people say that, you just look at them and say, so? <laughs> you can't divorce him from the rest of the Bible. You can't do that. And the reason people continue to do this is because it works. But here's the other issue. 
Well, Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. And I just, I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and be honest. I may have told you all this last time I was here. There's this guy, kind of lives on the inside of me. His name is Bad Vody. <laughs> I just, everything is cool as long as I let him out every once in a while, you know, go to the gun range or jujitsu tournaments. We're, we're cool. But, you know, sometimes when I'm, when I'm, when I'm dealing with people like this, he, he wants to talk to them, and I just really have to try to not let him do that. Um, <laughs> Because I ain't even sure that brother's saved sometime. Um, but at any rate, bad Vody gets excited when people bring this up. You know? He does, because they're like, well, Jesus never talked about homosexuality. Um, dear friend, uh, Jesus is a member of the Godhead. Jesus has existed eternally in perfect union with the Father and the Spirit, which means when rocks of fire and brimstone were coming down on Sodom and Gomorrah, he was not absent, nor was he in disagreement. Amen. He is a member of the Godhead. Tell the truth. When people bring that up to you, you don't think about that. We don't think about the fact that Jesus is a member of the Godhead. He's a member of the Trinity. And as such, you can't divorce him from the God on the left side of the book because he is the God on the left side of the book. Perfect union. Perfect agreement. No disagreement whatsoever. In fact, he raises the stakes. You have heard it said. Don't commit adultery. But I say to you, if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. He raises the stakes. So again, there is this perfect union, unity. This affects our worship, and it affects our witness. We, we worship the one who is God. We worship the one who has always existed as God. We worship the one who is in perfect unity and perfect harmony with the Father and the Spirit. We worship the triune God. Jesus is worthy of our worship because he's God. 